A big portion of NBA fans have labeled Luka as a ball stopper after 2022's conference finals against the Warriors. He's also taken flack for missing some shots with the game on the line early in this season. I'm here to tell you that this man's offensive toughness deserves its respect. The best isolation shot creator in the game of basketball, in Doncic, is just too crafty and innovative to hold in check off the dribble. Much is said about the gravity drawing of Stephen Curry, and rightfully so, but it doesn't seem like the gravitational pull that Luka has on defenses gets the proper respect. While Andrew Wiggins and Golden State's defense did an outstanding job on Doncic in 2022's conference finals, he still averaged 32 points per game on decent efficiency in that series. But in the early going this season, the Mavericks' top player is evidently in much better condition and is therefore dominating the competition at a historic pace. Carrying the flow he developed in the Eurobasket tourney, Luka's now posted the longest 30-plus point scoring streak to begin a season of all time outside of Wilt Chamberlain. As a hometown Raptor fan, it was tough to watch Doncic light up the Raptors in Kobe-esque fashion, but whether you're from Dallas or not, this video shows you why Luka Doncic shouldn't be taken for granted. Before continuing, just 8.2% of you watching are subscribed, so please hit the sub box and turn on notifications so you're updated on NBA analysis like this. Please hit the like button to help this video spread. Also, please follow at Hoops on Instagram and Twitter. Thanks so much for your support. Back to the content. In the NBA, players take an under-evaluated amount of hits to the head and bumps and bruises throughout the course of a grueling 82-game grind. Pair that with the facts that the average height and weight of an NBA player is 6'6", 217, in addition to how fast the up-and-down pace of the game has become in the modern era, and this is one of the most physically demanding sports leagues there is. In a big way, that physicality makes basketball the best sport in the world, and because of that, Luka's bulkiness, footwork, ability to see over the top of the defense, and pure playmaking prowess tremendously benefit him. Listed at 6'7", 230 with an off-the-charts IQ consisting of top-of-the-league guard skills, Doncic meets the criteria of this league and then some. Even after we've witnessed peak LeBron James, the way Luka's dominated the point forward spot has been revolutionary in its own right. With a massive size advantage for a point guard, Luka's generation-altering bag consists of ball-handling shiftiness, endlessly worked on off-the-dribble shooting, and wizard-esque passing. Against a playoff-bred, lengthy Toronto defense on Friday night, a team who we broke down in two separate videos before this one, Luka wasn't having any of what I said in those uploads and went to work against the boasted Raptors. In the game we're going to break down film on, Doncic not only scored 35 points on 82.7% true shooting, but grabbed 8 boards, dropped 6 dimes, racked up 3 steals, and compiled a block. We'll get to how he dominated Toronto, but fans and media don't talk enough about how in Luka's 5 career seasons, he's only failed to average 27.7 points per game once, which came in his rookie year where he averaged a not too shabby 21.2 points per game. We broke down last video how Pascal Siakam picked up a basketball at age 16, which is amazing considering where Pascal's currently at, but that's the same age when Doncic started playing pro basketball in the EuroLeague back in 2014-15. While he won't turn 24 until February, Doncic has been performing at nearly the highest level for around a decade now. He's used that extra experience to the fullest extent evolving from a two-point-per-game score in his first EuroLeague season eight years ago to now a 36-point-per-game score in his fifth career campaign in the NBA. Best part of Doncic's early legacy is that when it matters most in the postseason, he's never failed to average 31 points per night. Last spring, Luka averaged a career high in free throw percentage by far, shooting 77% from the line in 2022's playoffs, a 25% increase from the year prior. To start this season, despite missing tough looks for his Mavs with the game on the line, in terms of his late game execution from how Doncic has performed in the postseason, whether it was his magic from the bubble, his continued scoring domination in 2021's playoffs, or his run to get three wins from the finals in 2022, I don't know what else to tell you if you still claim Luka isn't a clutch player. Luka has a Kobe Bryant, I want to destroy you type killer mentality, something he displayed against the team I was hyping up prior to the game in the Raptors. Toronto coach Nick Nurse is known for being responsible for the box and one strategy that helped keep Curry somewhat in check during 2019's finals. Most recently, Nurse's Raptors okay. held Trey Young to 13 points and 10 turnovers on 3 for 13 made shots. 
However, Nurse's game plan didn't come close to having the same impact on Luka. Whether it was creating for himself or a teammate, Doncic consistently made the right decision out of blitzes, traps, or straight-on isolations, masterfully tearing up the Raptors' defense. The Raptors seem content to give Powell the open role in hopes of baiting Luka into a pass to Dwight before rotating back, but Luka sees it coming and instead Euro steps through Coloco and Siakam and somehow finds the space to thread a pass to the corner to Dorian Finney-Smith, an automatic shot for Dodo. Ananobi picks up Doncic in transition and assumes he's going to continue getting his teammates involved early and often, but Luka just hesitates and steps back with OG backing off even the slightest bit. This time, with his primary defender guarding him in Scotty Barnes, Luka goes in the opposite direction of Christian Wood's screen. Gary Trent Jr. should have full-on rotated instead of stunted because Luka shows off his ambidextrousness with a straight-line drive lefty. Luka's so good at using the proper angles to attack, and of course he's very good with that left hand. Pick and roll blitzes like these from Chris Boucher trapped Trey Young when Toronto faced Atlanta, but Luka hangs onto it, spins through Boucher and Barnes to penetrate the lane and force the help of Siakam, resulting in a wide open triple for Tim Hardaway Jr. Switching from drive and kick to drive and attack on a possession to possession basis, Toronto doesn't recognize the pattern. Luka gets Scotty on his back in a pick and roll. Kleba may have gotten away with a moving screen, but still a crafty, high IQ, and decisive attack. As they often do, Toronto fails to realize that long shot equals long rebound, and after Doncic grabs the O board, he puts his shoulder into the taller Siakam, who doesn't go up with two arms to contest fundamentally, instead he flails out with one arm, and it's an easy finish for Luka because of that. The Raptors have the game planning and weapons to be a good defense, but need to be reminded of the little things like straight up contests, that was way too easy of a finish. Coach Nurse stayed true to fighting through screens as opposed to switching them, but after Doncic gets past Barnes like he was doing all night, the help of Gary Trent Jr. leaves Dinwiddie wide open for three. A few possessions later, Trent Jr. leaves Dinwiddie wide open to again blitz Doncic, this time in the backcourt. OG thinks the pass is going to Finney Smith and is caught out of position. Easy three-pointer for Dallas off another savvy Doncic dime. First bit of Doncic playmaking in the second half came off another complete miscommunication for Toronto. As Coloco thinks they're switching, Barnes isn't aware of that who goes back to pick up Luka, leaving Powell wide open, and Siakam doesn't read or react properly to the play. Ananobi gets caught ball watching and again the Raptors leave Dinwiddie open. Toronto lazily not mixing up the game plan definitely hurt them, but on possessions like these where Luka displays his infamously improved running hook, there's nothing they could have done about this man's mastery. He's that good. Doncic goes momentum cross between the legs to freeze Ananobi who's thinking jump shot. One of the game's best isolation defenders in OG stays right there, but there's nothing anyone can do about vintage high arcing on balance pivoting fadeaways like these. Rising power forward Precious Achua gets the same treatment, as despite Luka somewhat losing control on his behind the back, he whips out an unheard of combination consisting of Smitty move, two momentum crossover hesitations, fake step back to his left, between the legs to his right, slight drive entry back left, and spin off his right pivot foot for another turnaround fade with Achua all up in his grill. Good stick to it of defense by Precious despite getting broken once, but just nasty stuff from Luka, who makes those types of sequences habitual. Lastly, he takes on the problem child Scotty Barnes in an isolation, proceeding to simply shed his fellow rookie of the year with a slight drive entry and evidently trained, hefty space creating James Harden esque step back. What's the most underrated part of Luca's bag in your opinion? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shout out and the top 5 commenters by December 21st earn free merchandise of their choosing. Today's speaks winner is KT who says Siakam will keep up his production for sure, in fact it might get better. He's not having an incredible shooting season as of now, he's just around his alley with increased usage. My guess is that Toronto will start making less shots throughout the season, causing Pascal's assists to go down. Give me 26, 9, and 6 on 57% true shooting, and another all-NBA selection for Pascal. Thanks for watching, have a good one.